God the Father is not a spirit. You say, well, the Bible, let's turn there. John chapter 4, verse 24. Get a King James Bible, okay? God's pure, perfect word. And I want you to take it and I want you to open it and actually look at it. All right? Don't be just a, a internet deadhead that just sits there and listens to this thing. Get a King James Bible and actually look at the scriptures that I'm going to be turning to today. Uh, you watch a lot of these sermons these guys do in, in their little churches and everything else, and they're just saying, you know, the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says. They're not telling them to turn there. They don't even want to pick this thing up. They got it sitting on their little pulpit, you know, just like it's kind of a, ugh, they're kind of afraid of it. Pick it up. Read it for yourself. All right. John chapter 4, verse 24. Every word of God is pure. Every word of God is important. I'm going to show you the reason why. John chapter 4, verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I've heard so many times people will say, see, the Bible teaches that God is the spirit. Okay? Now let's look at the statement there in John 4.24. God is a spirit. Okay? Notice it does not say God the Father is a spirit. Or the spirit okay that's very important to understand that all right why well we're going to show this in the study again i'm going to prove it again from the scriptures that man is created in the image of god man has a body a soul a spirit okay these three are one there's one person right here before you i'm not created in god's image and here's you know, Brian number two and Brian number three and Brian number one in the middle. No. And it's not the same. It's the same thing with God. There's not God number one, God number two, God number three. You say, well, we don't believe in three gods. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yes, they do. They're just lying to you when they say they don't. What is this statement saying then? God is a spirit. Yes. What's the formula here? Body soul, spirit. Okay? Simple English lesson here. How many of each are there? One. Would it be correct to say God is three spirits, like James White teaches in his book? No. God is two spirits. No. God is a, a spirit. Okay, you say, well, but but the, the Father, yeah, we're gonna I'm gonna get into a lot of different stuff today here. But when I say my belief and what the Bible teaches is Jesus Christ is the body, the Father is the soul, and the Holy Spirit, guess who he is? <laughs> okay? I've actually heard people that believe similar to what I believe, and they'll say, Well, the Holy Spirit is the soul. Uh no. <laughs> The Holy Spirit is the Spirit. It's not that difficult. But then they'll say, but the Bible says, the Bible says, God is a Spirit. Okay, but it doesn't say God is the Spirit. All right? The Father is the Spirit, or something like that. It is just simply saying God is a singular Spirit. And I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to prove it to you from the Scriptures today, if you have enough attention span to watch and actually look at the Scriptures. Now, if you're a three-year-old or in kindergarten or something, well, you're probably not going to make it through. You probably already shut it off, you know, because, you know, you're, you're not sensing a spirit of love right now. The knowledge is there, but the love isn't. <laughs> my brother told me that recently. Someone said that about me. I uh, just broke my heart. Not quite. Please notice this, though. God is a spirit, right? Would it be correct for me to say Brian Denlinger is a spirit? Yes. doesn't make me on God's level. It just is simply saying, I'm created in the image of God. I have a body, a soul, and a spirit. I can't say, you know, Brian Denlinger is the spirit. That doesn't make any sense. Brian Denlinger has two spirits, three spirits. No, I am a spirit. That's all that the statement is saying. God is a spirit. 
But I'm going to show you some really interesting scriptures now. Okay. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. And I'm going to show you the scriptures. I mean, this whole Godhead, Trinity, or oneness, modalism thing, what does it say? What is, you know, this is very deep and philosophical. No, it's actually not. It's pretty simple when you get right down to it. And I'm going to show you how it's simple. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. You say, but it, see, it says, we got you there. You're a heretic, Denlinger, because it says our image. God's saying, let us make man in our image. Okay, again, you're going to have to have a little English lesson here. Okay, let, let us make man in our image. You say, uh-oh, sorry, doesn't work out for you because you see us is plural and our is plural. God is obviously speaking to somebody else. So he's saying, let us make man in our image. But here's the problem. This is plural, plural, but what is image? Singular. Hmm. Now, if you're a Bible-believing Christian, if you are saved and have the Holy Spirit of God indwelling in you and you can understand these things, you can say, how can there be us and our plural and yet image singular? One, two, three, and yet one. It doesn't say, let us make man in our images. If they're, if they're, you know, like the Catholics used to teach, that they're actually Trinity triplets. All three persons look the same. You can find the paintings. I've done videos on it. <laughs> and so, for it to be that, it would have to say, let us make man in our images. It doesn't say that. You say, well, Pentecostal oneness, uh, modalism. Then it would have to say, let me make man in my image. It doesn't say that either. <laughs> okay, that's also stupid and heretical. I'm not a modalist. Trinitarians think I'm a modalist. Modalists think I'm a Trinitarian. It's funny. Why? They're both lost. Okay? You get that? Let us, three, make man in our, three, image, one. Simple. You say, but, but you didn't really prove your point. Let me prove it to you. You say, God just made a statement there that he's going to make man in his image. Right? When did he do it? Look over chapter 2. Verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. One, two, three. That meant that there were three atoms walking around. No. One man named Adam. But there's a body. There's a spirit. And there's a soul. Hmm. Did you get that? God says, let us make man in our image. And then when he does it, he says, okay, here's a man, a man. And he has a body formed of the dust of the ground. He has a spirit breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he has a soul. He becomes a living soul. One man, three parts. Three things, however you want to say it. Okay? Man is made in God's image. God is one person. Three parts, three things. Whatever you want to say. God is not three persons. First, First Thessalonians chapter 5. I'll show it to you here. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 
Verse 23. Are you turning there? Are you just sitting there watching me or something? Turn in your Bible. Okay? Make sure I'm telling you the truth. King James Bible is your standard. Not me. Not confessions of faith or catechisms or whatever else. The Bible. The Scriptures. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Three parts. It's not rocket science. Okay? It's really not that hard. So, again, just to recap here. Bible believer says three parts, one person. Trinitarians say, no, there's three persons. No. Modalist says there's just one, three modes. You know, the Father is a mode, Jesus is a mode, the Holy Spirit's a mode. But they never appear in the same place, you know, as separate, you know, their manifestations or whatever else. They're all just, you know, shape shifting, you know, when they need to, which is really stupid. But you say, we caught you though. We caught you red-handed. I'm making an expose video because when you quoted John 4.24 up here, you skipped verse 23, you dirty heretic. You didn't show the context. Okay, let's go back and look at the context. Now it gets really fun. I mean, this, this stuff here, I just love preaching it because it's, it, I think one of the greatest blessings is when you realize who Jesus Christ is, and you give him all the glory. Oh boy. You realize who he is. Oh man. Just love the Lord that much more. John chapter 4, verse 23. See? We read in verse 24, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit, him in spirit and in truth. But what's verse 23 say? But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And goes on. You say, oh, context is the Father. Ooh, see, we got you. The Father is the Spirit. The Father is a spirit. Well, if you understand the biblical Godhead, God the Father is composed of body, soul, and spirit. Okay? So he is, God is a spirit. So I thought you said, he, just bear with me here. You see? Because just like Melchizedek, He's without father, without mother, having either end of uh, life or, or end of days or whatever it is. And you say, well, that can't be Jesus because, you know, he, he did have a father and he, and he did have an end of life and whatever else. But then there's other things, you know, that, that look like Jesus. And Hebrews chapter 6 actually calls Melchizedek Jesus. But it can't be because, you know, and they get into all this stuff. Um, but you see, here's the point. You have to understand the separation that exists within the Godhead, body, soul, spirit. Body can die on the cross, but the soul and spirit don't. You see? Spirit can be omnipresent. But the body doesn't have to be omnipresent. And yet you can talk about them all as the same being. So, the Father is the soul, very clearly from studying the Scriptures, but He's also a spirit. So in context, it can talk about both Father and Holy Ghost. And here's where it gets really good. Okay? Now it gets fun. Matthew chapter 10. Go to Matthew chapter 10. This is a good one here. Matthew chapter 10, verse 19 through 20. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father doesn't say your father, the spirit, the spirit of your father, which speaketh in you. Hmm. Keep your hand there. Okay. Take your other hand and turn over to the book of Mark. Chapter 13. Very important that you keep your place there in Matthew chapter 10. But go to Mark chapter 13. You see, what is the, the spirit of your father? We'll see they're separate persons, so they must have separate spirits. Uh, no, they don't. 
Mark chapter 13 and verse 11, speaking about the same thing in the future, the time of Jacob's trouble. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Wait a second. Matthew chapter 10 says the Spirit of your Father. Mark chapter 13, the Holy Ghost. Hmm. So what do you think it means here, God is a spirit? God is a spirit. God is a soul. God is a body. But the spirit of your Father is the Holy Ghost. How do you know? That depends on if you can read English, friend. Mark 13 identifies him as the Holy Ghost. Matthew chapter 10 says, the spirit of your Father. The Father doesn't have some spirit that's separate from the Holy Ghost. You see? Pretty interesting. But I can get you even better than that. Ephesians chapter 4. So I, I, I'm not convinced. I, I, I have to say that, you know, I respect learned scholars like Dr. James White. He said that it's three spirits. You know, in eternity past, there, there are different spirits and, and things. And I, I, I don't know if I could agree. And maybe it's the Father is a spirit, God is a spirit, and then the Holy Spirit. Maybe, the, maybe they each have their own spirit and the spirit of Christ that dwell within you and think, you know, I, I, I don't know. Well, uh, here's a good one for you then. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 3 through 6. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. The Spirit. That singular, definitive article, the, before a singular word, spirit. Still not convinced though, right? Then we'll just keep reading. Verse 4, there is one body and, drum roll please, one spirit. One spirit. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord. Can you read? One faith, one baptism. Here's a good one. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. No, that can't be right. That, oh, wait a second here. I'm getting confused. Yeah, you are if you're a Trinitarian. Bible believer, you say, well, praise the Lord, that's beautiful. Wait a second, the Father's in you? But the Bible also teaches Christ in you. And your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in you. So you got three persons in you? Get a little crowded in there. No. You're connected to God. Body, soul, spirit. First Corinthians chapter 2. Tie this whole thing together. If you're born again, you'll get it. If you're lost, you won't. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, like the Trinitarian thing, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. Yeah. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. You know, the vast majority of people out there are either Trinitarian or modalist. There's just a few of us that understand the Godhead. And boy, it irks both sides. They get all irritated at us. They get angry. Yeah, that's as it's supposed to be. The road which leads to truth, it leads to life, is narrow. And few there be that find it. You know why? Because they don't want to lower their pride. The lost out there. Trinitarians and modalists, they don't want to lower their pride. They don't want to say, hey, I'm wrong about this. I can't even understand the very nature of God. They don't want to do that. You have to humble yourself and come to the Lord broken. Drop the self-righteous pride, you know. The Lord will save you, then He'll show you these things. The hidden wisdom. So that you can look at this stuff like this and you can say, wow, it makes beautiful sense. 
But the Trinitarians look at this with their worldly wisdom, with their philosophies and their church councils and everything else, and they say, hmm, let's, let's use philosophy to make sense of this. The modalists do the same thing. <clears throat> it's kind of like dumber, dumber, you know. Verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. How many lords are there? How many lords? I believe that would be one. And you do the study into the Lord of glory, and it's Jesus Christ. But it's also the Father. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Because they're one and the same being. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God." Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, Trinitarianism, modalism, but the spirit which is of God. Who is that? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Who is the spirit of God? Let's keep reading. Verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, Trinitarianism, modalism, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Spirit of God. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You know what's funny too? I've seen that a lot of times the Trinitarians, they're not King James Bible believers. They have to bring in all their other stuff. And you know what else? Modalists are the same way. They have to change the text. They can't handle the text just as it is. Again, they'll go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, where it plainly gives the three parts there, body, soul, spirit. And they'll say, well, soul and spirit are just, you know, it's not soul, comma, spirit. It's more soul slash spirit. It's the soul and spirit's the same thing. So you get, you know, two instead of three. They have to change the word of God. Hmm. Why is that? But the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Get it? Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Notice there, verse 10. God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. The Father. Verse 13 which the Holy Ghost teacheth. You see? Verse 16, we have the mind of Christ. There's three separate persons communicating to know three parts of one being. Just that simple. So when you hear somebody and you're a Godhead believer, you believe in what the Bible teaches, that Jesus Christ is Holy, completely God. He's not a one of three persons or God the Son or, you know, all this other stuff, this Trinity garbage. And you hear that and they say, well, I can prove from the Scriptures that God the Father is the Spirit. He is a Spirit. Um, show them this study. Okay? God is a Spirit. God is a body. God is a soul. All right? But you got to get the difference between the three. It's not all just one God that morphs into three different modes. That's modalism. That's ridiculous. It's not one God composed of three gods. You know, not even three gods. It's three separate persons. That's her heresy as well. Get the difference. If you're spiritual, if you're saved, the Holy Spirit of God shows you these things. You know what I mean? So, I pray that you get this thing figured out. I pray that you watch some of our other studies on this to really get all these different arguments figured out and whatever else. Don't fall for the Trinity thing. Don't fall for modalism. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.
King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.